Hey and welcome back to the second induction heater tutorial. So this will be another simulator session, but I think it's better to have more simulator sessions and have a fully optimized circuit than wasting a lot of money in building these circuits actually and then find out that they are garbage. So last time we ended up at this nice circuit here. It's my improved Royer oscillator with a removed center tap coil. So the drawback of this design is actually that if we don't have a center tap coil, we cannot provide current to flow in both directions. So current can either go from plus to minus here or from plus to minus here. Only in one direction it goes through the coil. But if we center tap the coil, what I do now, oh, that's a resistor, sorry. If I center tap the coil, like here, the current can go in both directions. This just provides more power to the system, but it increases the voltage and I wanted to have a safe circuit, so I afford safety first. But this time I want to talk a bit about efficiency and this design is definitely a bit more efficient but only slightly a bit because this circuit isn't very efficient at all. And it's pretty simple for beginners. I already created one and made a video on this. It's the simple induction heating test video, just 25 seconds. But now I'm going to show you the drawbacks of this circuit. So center tap coil, 1.2 my inductance at both parts and run the simulation. There's another circuit, I'll go through that later and that will be the advanced circuitry, so to tell. If we look at our power supply, it dropped to 2 volts and inside the circuit happened nothing. Great, no oscillation. So that's already the first rollback, this circuit does not start to oscillate if you don't want it all the time. And you can pretty easily come around this by modifying the center tap just a bit, place it just a bit off center and then it should go on properly because it needs the oscillation to start and there it goes. And the reason for that is that the driver of the FAT gates is pretty basic. So the circuit is its own driver and therefore the amount of current and power that is going through the circuit is dependent on the voltage inside the LC circuit or the oscillating part, so the coil and the capacitor, if you remember. And that's basically the biggest problem with the circuit, that the driver is not independent from the oscillation circuit. So this is a simulation that means that all the wires and all the components have no resistance at all. So it's all zero ohms. That means we don't lose any current. So if this works good here and this is a good driver, we should not draw any current after the capacitor and the coil are charged with energy. So let's run the simulation. And we see current increases as beginning at the beginning to charge the capacitor in the coil, but then it stays at around 1.6 amps. It's minus 1.6 amps, but it does not play any role. So this circuit is continuously drawing current. And this current is wasted. And it's wasted inside the LC circuit. And there's no resistance in here. So this current is simply a loss into the LC circuit. And 
This is the case because the LC circuit allows only a sinus curve at its resonant frequency to pass. And we do not provide a perfect sinus curve. So, sorry I closed too early. I just want to look now on what we provide to this. So let's look at 30M to 31M with a scale of 100 microseconds. And you see, this is not a sinus. This is some kind of bad square wave because the rise and the fall time are pretty high. So if you now think about a sinus, there is there are a lot of parts of the square wave which are excess. So if you draw a sinus in here, I do it with this crosshair, there's a lot of the curve that is outside the sinus. Everything that is outside the sinus will be blocked by the LC circus and this power will be wasted and that's why we are drawing current. So this is just a simulation. So in reality we want to heat metal and therefore we have a load resistance. And let's place a load resistance. I want a load of 1 ohm. So I put 0 0.5 ohms into both coils. I already have to mention, I also have to mention that if you did not watch the first video, you should do this that you understand the coil and the capacitor and the LC circuit. I explained it there. So we have now a load of 1 ohm on our oscillating circuit. Run it. Boom. No oscillation. Just plain current, plain voltage. Absolutely nothing happens. We are just drawing current. So oscillation stopped. We draw too much energy out of the system, so the voltage decreased inside the system and therefore the driver got less voltage and therefore the FEDs provide less power to the system. And that's the problem, if you draw too much power out of this oscillator it will fail because the driver is heavily dependent on the voltage inside the circuit and you can pretty easy shoot it out by drawing too much power from it. So I actually found out that if you use 0 0.025 at both, both coals, which is 0 0.05 ohms in general, the circuit still oscillates. So the amount of power you can draw from the circuit is really, really low. And we already see that we have very, very little load and we are already drawing about 7.5 amps, which is tremendous for this small load. This can be done ways, ways better. And so we need basically a circuit that provides three advantages over the circuit. So first, I want to have current to go in both directions, left and right through the coil without having to center tap it. So I need some kind of full bridge or A bridge so that current can go through like in a cross and I don't have to center tap it. Additionally, I don't want this square wave driver which wastes a lot of energy in the frequency. And at the fourth point, at the, sorry, the third point, I want my driver to be independent from the power source and the oscillating circuit so that if I draw power, my oscillation won't collapse. And therefore, created another circuit. The circuit actually looks simpler because I put the drivers into these nice boxes here and that's our power supply. It's 30 volt now. This is 10 volt, so okay, 
a bit of disadvantage for this circuit, but I tested it with 30 volts again and it was no better. So here I just use 30 volts and this resistor series of 1, so 30 volts, 30 amps. So what this supply can deliver and that's exactly the same power supply I have here as well. So here you actually see the 8 bridge. I call it X because here's our plus line and the current co can go either this direction or this direction. So they are always opened in an X shape. And two MOSFETs at once are opened. Their gates are simply connected to ground to close them if you don't want to have them open. And to drive them you have basically two options. The first option you have is to use a square wave, like in those cheap inverters, and to create this you usually use a CD4047, which is an inverter IC. And I'll close this circuit. No, don't want to save it. Don't need it anymore. I already built one of these royal oscillators and I don't think I'll build this for YouTube because it's just a waste of components. So run this. What we got get actually here, oh the time resolution is not optimal. Not perfect. So go just for one milliseconds. What we get here is a nice square wave between 0 and 20 volts. 20 volts is the maximum gate voltage and I thought I just push it to the limits. And on the that's the driver for the first diagonal line, so to say. And for the second one we have another driver that is independent from the left driver, or it can be dependent if you use the IC. And it's simply inverted the square wave. So here, if we have a peak here, we have a bottom at the other one. So they are basically flipped. This one, this line here is act active and then this line here is active. And the other way around if the inverter changes and the frequency this happens is the resonant frequency of the oscillating circuit. And in this case it's 20 kilohertz. So I run them both at 20 kilohertz. This capacitor here is added just to keep the high frequency current that moves inside here confined so that no high frequency will be wasted inside the power supply and it helps to keep the voltage stable. Give this a quick run. I should crank up the simulation time now to 10 milliseconds because I already tested all this out before I'm doing this video now. And you first see here the square wave and that's our power supply voltage. And that's the current we draw, we draw, uh, sorry, we draw. But I'm wondering why this is so much, because I thought, yes, there is no, I put no load on this. No load, actually. I thought it was less without load. We'll see. So inside our oscillating circuit, the amps will rise to 65 amps and the voltage will rise to 15 volts. And at our power supply we have, if the oscillation did start and the capacitor is charged, we draw about 17.5 amps without load. So we're drawing a lot of current. And that's usually a sign that it's not working properly. So, how to improve this? Basically, there is another option to drive this circuit, and that is not using a square wave, but a sinus curve. But before I do this, I will show you what happens if we put a load in here. So, one ohm. Run it. 
and current drops, but oscillation does not stop. That's because our driver is independent, so we have an advantage about the Royer. And we are drawing more current, but that's still a huge current. At 8 amps, we have in our oscillation circuit, we draw minus 21.8 amps in our power supply. Keep this in mind, because now I'm going to switch to the improved design. So instead of a square wave, we use a sinus. DC offset 0, amplitude 0, frequency 20 kilohertz. No delay, no phase, no cycles. Same for a white one. Twenty volts, twenty k. No delay, no feeder, but we want this to be inverted. So we type in one hundred eighty. So it moved one hundred eighty degree on the x-axis, or exactly about pi. And let's look how our driver looks now with a sine, a sinus, and I'll scale down the time a bit, so you can see it better. Here's our sinus for the left driver and for the right one. See, it's inverted. And only the thing above zero matters. And everything below zero can be cut off using a circuit, which I'll demonstrate in future videos, because I show you how to build one of these drivers. So first, I'm going to remove the load. You can see how this circuit behaves without load, and I have to put up the simulation time again. So without load, ooh, what's happening here? Without load, we don't draw any current. And if we look inside our oscillation circuit, we have 62 amps and 18 volts going without any load. So this circuit has no resistance, as I already said, because these wires are ideal. And with a signer's wave, which controls our gates, we don't waste any current. So if we have no load, we draw no current. And no, we add exactly 1 ohm. We draw about 20 amps, a bit less than in the inverter, but we have way more current in the oscillations. 9.25 amps instead of 8. Point whatever, and we are drawing less current. So this circuit is actually way more efficient. And in the next videos, I'm going to show you how to build these drivers. And hope you enjoy this. Hope you know now that there are actually many designs how you can build this circuit. And I decided this one to build. And over the next videos, I will do first the signal generator and then continuing to create the whole induction furnace. Thank you for watching. See you soon.